It doesn't feel like you've grown anything. Bloody hell, you look like a Shaolin monk. Ready? We're not off to a brilliant start. What the hell are you excited about? Disgusting behavior. Good morning, and what a beautiful day for skinny. You're, what are you doing, you f idiot? Are you dumb? <laughs> beautiful day for some skinny dipping. It's not, it's 20 degrees. So I, I'm not planning on making a video today. Don't get me wrong, I have tons of videos I could be making. But there are some there are some other things that I need to catch up on. So number one, the automation to post the videos, done. All right, that's amazing, that's finished. So I engaged the editor again today, got loads of clips uploaded. I still need to get more clips edited, but that's not exactly particularly exciting for us to do. Um, the video I posted yesterday, not very good. So we're only at 7,000 views. No bueno. And it'll be interesting when the retention graph comes through, we have to wait at least 24 hours for that. But when that comes through, I'll be able to see where people dropped off and get an understanding of why. Like, is it just the concept? Is it that just because people see that it's eligible for commission or a branded post that people drop? I think that does make people want to scroll, but I think that's them picking up on a reason to scroll versus just seeing the pay partnership and not caring about whether the video has hooked them or not. I think I should pay more attention to getting a better hook. I'm not, do new. Um, I also had to think about the the automation on here to add a note to the new day of topics for that automation that I had made. And when I say H-E-Y-S-I-R-I -I on here, like to make myself a note, I understand that that probably sets your phone off too. And that would be super annoying. So from now on, I might have to use the, you know, hold down the button to get Siri engaged and then go from there. Can't see anything going. Um, that I just had another topic I was going to talk about. Holding that down. Um, oh, yeah. So to get Siri activated, obviously, you have to say, hey, and the interesting thing is that that was never really a term, like saying hey, as in like to get someone's attention to greet them. That wasn't a thing in England. I think it's become more of a thing now, but you'll find like, even in the corporate world, like now that I'm out, I don't hear it as much. But when people would talk about something, they'd give an example and their example would always start with, hey, how about we do it this way? And like your mid conversation, your mid conversation, your mid monologue, let's say, and then you transition into this section of speaking as if you're in the moment, so you're giving the example. People really often start off with, hey, and then go into what they're doing. It's kind of like a, it seems like a way to break up the conversation or initiate this, I don't know, this example. But I've seen it used all, like people use it all the time here. But then like, so I guess this goes on the topic of things I've noticed between the US and the UK. But then I've noticed now that in the UK, when it comes to ordering food, people would say, um, can I have, please could I get, or I would like, so and so, right? Let's say let's say that's polite. But in the states, 
it's more like give me a I'll take a um, get me that it's much more of a declarative as a statement of do this as if the servo the waiter whoever it is is working for you which I understand they kind of are in that instance and I remember thinking God, that's so rude how Americans talk to people over here but then you realize that it's just that's just a different culture and then you have to go along but I started to recognize my friends asking for things at restaurants in a bit more of a declarative way a bit more of a statement type of way like I think we went for an Indian and my friends some of my friends were like I'll take yeah I'll take the so and so so and so and I wonder why like how that has come across to the UK I also have the opinion that you know people always say people from the UK are very polite I think it's now that living over here I think it's over polite and almost annoying in a way of being over polite you know what I haven't done the last few days my planner which I kind of committed to doing every day I also didn't actually do any weights at the gym but I have this um, like press up machine type thing. So I think we'll give that a go and see how far I can get. It's gonna... I'm not gonna get very far, but let's try it. Yes. All right, boss man, we're gonna have a call with Kenny. I forgot it's Wednesday. Well, I knew it was Wednesday. I just forgot to mention it. Screen record, record. Kenny, what's good, my Ken dog? I think we're going to talk through some of his. You bloody hell. Bloody hell. You look like a Shaolin monk that's about ready to suicide. Dude, it's hella cold in my house right now. It's like, it's, I think it's 60 in here. 16 degrees there? 60. It's 60 oh, in your house? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's bloody freezing. It's like 20 degrees outside here. But uh, why yeah, is it so cold yeah. in your house? I just haven't turned on the heat. I said, fuck it. I just put on a hoodie. It's 60? Bloody hell. Yeah, yeah. 60's not bad, though. Well, it looks bad. <laughs> yeah, it's funny That's how... It's actually really funny. Like, when we, had, when we had Rugi, it meant that Shay and I could no longer just, like, set the temperature to what we want to. It has to be at a certain <laughs> temperature at night for him. Are you, yeah, I mean, I usually keep the house at, like... Like 67, 68. I've just been too lazy to kick the heat on. L too lazy to kick the heat on? It's literally a press of a button. It's, a, it's not even that. It's on my phone. I can just do it oh, for myself. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You're just the cheap ass at the moment. Yeah, and my house runs on gas, so it, it literally costs nothing. It costs like $30 a month to run that heat. I just don't really care. I yeah. like the cold. $30 a month? That's nothing. I think ours will be like 600 a month. Dude, stop but, your line. No, but yeah, then we have, you know, being That's in Kansas, we have all the space in the house. Right? Yeah. But we have like... And your house a, is like 2,000 square feet? Uh, just over two and a half, and then it's three stories. So there's a lot of space. Oh, uh, because you have a multi-level, don't you? We have, yeah, basement, main floor, and then like a top floor where the bed is. Oh, you do is. the basement? Okay. That's where I am, and it's uh, flipping cold. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know your basement was fully furnished. That makes more sense then. Yeah. So yeah, it's just... that's kind of crazy. Jesus, six hundred. Oh, right. Yeah, compared to thirty, and you won't you won't turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. You can never oh, call me God. cheap again. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Bro, did you see that video that Stevie posted the other day about his meme page on Facebook? Who? Stevie sells. Oh no. Bro, Stevie posted a video about a meme page that he started running on Facebook, and he's making like two to four grand a month off that. I'm I'm gonna look that up today, and because I'm I'm wondering. I need, give, I need to give this a try. I have like a hundred and nine thousand followers on my Facebook page. I'm wondering if I should convert that into a meme page and just do like use AI and generate memes and just start busting the baddies out. Busting the baddies out. <laughs> busting the baddies out. Yep, I reckon you should bust out the baddies. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> now that you repeat it, it's so funny. Yeah. His, um... Okay, I think I see it has, like, three quarters of a million views. I'll watch it after this. Yeah. Okay, alright, I'll have a look at it. Um, I know the, the different ways to make money now is just crazy. Like, the number of people that are now just clipping big-name content. Yeah, bro. Like, Jinxie is, like, the biggest, one of the biggest creators right now next to Kai Center and stuff. Like, Jinxie sits at over, like, 120,000 Twitch subs a month, which is wild. That's pulling half a million a month off subscriptions and no donuts alone. That's mental. And he's a 20-year-old kid, bro. It's crazy. I do. And this dude, dude, I watch him, though. I watch him all because he's so funny, bro. He'd, he'd be screaming, like, punching his camera and stuff and knocking off the table. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen, bro. Is it? It's, I can't handle it. It's Stupidity. that super high energy that seems like... Even making my videos... Like this, they would be in comparison to someone like Jinxie or a uh, Speed or something would be it's so boring. Yeah, so boring in comparison. But like they're, they're obviously two different styles. Yeah, have you seen his? I saw one of his. Like he did a setup tour. He had like some swamp ass chair. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like it's that's so like funny, the hyper relatable part about it, isn't it? Like people love that. No, yeah, he's a he's a twenty year old kid. He wears like the same five pairs of clothes, and he has like a swamp ass twenty dollar garage sale chair. Honestly, that's probably it's probably so bad for his health to be sat in that thing as long as he does. Oh, I know. <laughs> Poor guy. But yeah, but I, see I, 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 I seen this dude that said he was making like 10k a month on TikTok, posting like the clips and putting like Minecraft underneath it or GTA. I was like, oh my god, bro. I, I know. I, I think it'd be so easy to do. Like doing that would be a fucking horrible job. You're just like skimming through all this content. Like, I don't know why you don't just take someone, maybe this isn't ethically right, but take someone who's already made the funniest clips. Because like, I, I think this guy was saying, and I'll watch the stream, take, take the funny clips. Like, why bother doing all the cutting yourself? Take the work that someone else has done and then stick the clip on underneath. I know that's kind of slimy. That's what I would do. But no, I would do it. If the someone... job itself is already slimy. Right. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. It doesn't um, matter. Speaking of that, though, my my automation to post the clips to the different social media, the guy finished it this morning. So that's all done. The editor's so taking did he have to do, now. like, some coding for it or something? Or? No, it's just like a, you know, Zapier? Zapier? No, I've never heard of that. It's just an automation platform. So you, ch you tell it exactly what to do. So if a file gets uploaded into a certain folder on Google Drive, download it post it to TikTok or YouTube. Like there's some ins and outs of it, but Oh, uh, so it's like by it's like and or or if if, if this goes here then then this goes there. Okay. Yeah, if else statements basically. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Um so he's just finished that and then the guy's editing the clip, so that should be on automation as of later today, which is pretty sweet. So Oh the, speaking of, do you see I think the last time you and I spoke, Sam Sulek was at like 1.2 mil. He's at 1.9. I just saw this morning. On uh, on YouTube, you're fucking on, lying. I'm not. I'm not joking. He's gone up. I, another video I just watched. He's gone up a million. In it's because two months. he just started like a new season. He started his. He started his bulking winter season, which is gonna be nuts. <laughs> did, did he really? <laughs> I yeah, I haven't he followed. Just started it. It, yeah, he, he was coming towards the end of his cut, and he was rolling into his uh, winter bulk season. I think he's on winter bulk season, like, day four or five now. So, it's supposed to be just, like, disgusting. Like, he's gonna probably explode, bro. I don't know like, how you can get much bigger. Oh, just watch, bro. This dude's about to literally, like, blow up and, and explode. It's insane. That's actually what... Is that what got him going was... I remember the first time I ever saw him were like clips of him eating disgusting amounts of food at Five Guys and whatnot. Well, also another insane clip that he did was he had 315 on an incline press and he literally whipped it like six feet. Like, oh, he, for this it? Dude's sitting there like, yeah, yeah, he's like sitting there like clip. 315 and he couldn't get it up and he's just like, whoop, <laughs> just literally threw 350 pounds like six feet. Like, what? Like, I couldn't even do that to 3.15 pounds. Yeah, dude, that's nuts. It's literally insane. But yeah, but, all right. So you had you had um, some YouTube topics that you were pretty juiced up about. Yeah, bro. Let's hear them. Let's hear them. 
so so like my whole idea behind this like this mini like this series that i'm starting is like doing doing the things one i never got to learn as a kid two i always wanted to do but didn't have the money to do or three my dad was never there to teach me so <laughs> deep hit the heart strings so on that it's one. like so like you know how many like people always um like how many people wanted to do things like growing up and they just didn't have somebody to teach them like i taught my brother how to ride a bike if i didn't teach my brother how to ride a bike he probably would never have known how to ride a bike um okay. so i was thinking i was thinking on like a simple level like obviously we're, we're talking about sam like simplicity things that are extremely relatable that other people that you've probably thought of a dozen times in your life and been like, damn, I really want to do that. But it's not like so significant that you're like, yeah, I'm going to go to my way to do that. So I have certain ones on here, like how to learn a kickflip. I used to skateboard a lot as a kid, never learned how to do a kickflip. And a kickflip is like entry level into like the skateboard world. Like the difference between being able to do like an ollie and a kickflip is like going from like beginner to intermediate because that's like how different it actually is to break out of that window yeah it's like it's like when you see people bench 225 at the gym like two plates or whatever technically like out of i i read an article that said out of everybody that like works out there like if 225 seems really common but in all in like an actual theory there's only like around 1.7 percent of people that can bench 225 pounds two plates but you see people do it all the time so you think it's like a normal Damn, thing. Like I'm not. Yeah, like like that's a normal thing, but it's it's, it's actually not. Like it's it's not, which is crazy. Yeah, you. That's a play on it's, Garrett Castro or Castro, whatever his name is, because he does that. You know. Yeah. And you can. Yeah, I mean, exactly. as a recognizable face to bring it in. Yeah. But but like, Garrett is a great example for this because Garrett is like doing all the things we'd love to do as like a kid. Like he'll go throw knives, he'll shoot bows, he'll do BMX um skateboarding he'll go to the gym and bent like bench like he'll do he does all these things that like a lot of people wanted to do as a kid or couldn't do or still want to do and they're like stuck in like this adult like nine to five like thing yeah you think that's too that's below you a bunch of random things yeah exactly or you just don't have time because you're like always busy and always working or have kids now and stuff so I wrote down how to do a kickflip, learn to ride a unicycle. I want to, I've never touched one. I want to learn to ride a unicycle so bad. Okay. Um, throwing knives, which obviously like, like right there, that's an example. Like that seems so childish, but there's no way you can't look at me and tell me you've never tried to throw a knife or even grab the screwdriver and try to throw it. Oh yeah. I've thrown plenty. Well, of you're things. from the UK, so you might be different. Yeah. We're, we're always throwing knives. Have you really? Or was that a joke? No, I've, I'm, I haven't thrown a knife at a person, but yeah, I've tried throwing knives before. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what I'm saying. Just like, animals. It's such a relatable thing, and but there's technique behind it. There's a skill like that needs to be learned. There's certain distancing and throwing, and yeah. I thought that would be a cool. Yeah, yeah, like I thought that would be a cool video. And then on top of that, like some of these videos may only be five or six minutes long, you know, because it all just depends on how long it takes me to do something, but also something like that. I could make longer because I can try to be like, oh, I don't want to just throw the knife and stick it. Like, I want to learn, like, these three different techniques with it, like, these different tricks and stuff like that. And kind of, like, document it. So I have lockpicking. Who doesn't want to lockpick, bro? Right. Like, that's so seriously. much fun. That sounds so cool. Uh, holding my breath for X amount of time. Like, there is this tribe in the Philippines that holds their breath over over the, the past generations, their bodies and their lungs have actually adapted because they only live on water. They can hold their breath up to 19 minutes. That's insane. That, yeah, that's absolutely mad. That's a fish. They're fish. But tell me what boy or what man doesn't go to the water and almost test how long he can hold his breath at least once a year. Yeah, every single person. It's so relatable. <laughs> I know. So relatable. It, these like, type of topics are... Like, I'm not saying side quests as in like i'm gonna do them but they are basically side quests to life aren't they they're all the things that you want to be able to try and do yeah it's just it's the, i i want to basically like what i want to do like i was saying is like show people like you can still do these things even regardless of your age but also like it's not um 
what my plan is with every challenge that I take on is like, this is day one, this is hour zero. And I'm going to document how many hours and how many days in those hours it actually takes me to do it. So if I want to learn a kickflip and it takes me a total of five days, but only nine hours to learn it, that shows you like, hey, if you, you could do this in like nine to 10 hours, possibly not everybody's the same person. But you, you might think, oh, it might take me six or seven months to do this. But if you could actually dedicate a solid nine or ten hours to this over the next, even if it's two weeks, it doesn't have to be uh, a week. You could you could theoretically do this thing that you've been wanting to do your whole life. Like, right, even what's though stopping it's just you? a joke. Like, like, yeah, like, you can't take an hour a day for the next nine days to do this. Like, like you definitely can. And I'm, just show, and I'm showing you, like, it's possible. Okay, so that's the, <laughs> the message behind it, which is, you're not too old to do those things. The only thing stopping you from doing something you want to do is other people's perception and you. dedication to doing it. Yeah, because and, and like we were saying earlier, like so many people think these things are silly. I mean, like they are silly, but to us, like they matter. Like they're small, like accomplishments that. Yeah, are it's just, like, like fun. That... You you imagine getting to an older age, and being like, shit, like I. It doesn't, it wouldn't change my life, but I kind of wish that I at least tried, you know? Yeah, like, it just, it's just, like, continuously challenging yourself to learn, like, a new skill, regardless of how, like, quote-unquote stupid that skill is. Yeah. Because um, I have so many things on here, like, learning Rubik's Cubes, uh, different soccer tricks, riding a bike backwards, uh, trying to make the world's hardest dessert, just, just because, just because. Uh, learn how to throw cards like into like fruits and objects and like get them to actually stick. Learn how to moonwalk. I cannot moonwalk to save my life. I've always wanted to, and I can't. So you are your essentially. So what's what makes your stuff different than to Mike Shake? Well, I guess I guess the thing with Mike is like uh, Mike is actually Italian and he lives in Italy. So and he has a big verbal communication kind of difference. But I guess there's not a huge difference between me and Mike. But what I did notice is that there's not a lot of people that do what Mike do. And also, you know how we always say, like, there's somebody that's, like, in this day and age, like, when you start a YouTube channel or you become successful, there's somebody that you're modeling after. I could not find, for the life of me, the person that Mike was modeling after. And I found somebody on YouTube called Mike Boyd that started doing the same thing that Mike Shake did, but six years ago. And that's exactly what Mike Shake modeled his channel off was Mike Boyd. Uh, okay, interesting. And I was like, "What?" And then I, I kept, I, I, I've done, I've like, I was scouring the internet like everywhere, and Mike Shake and Mike Boyd are the only people on the platform that have done this. And I was like, "There's no way, like, there's no way that's kind of crazy." Yeah, I feel like you, tons of people are doing this stuff, but only in short form content. Which is obviously yeah. much harder to find and search for, but I think yeah, longer. So what's your what's the style gonna be of the video? How are you gonna? I want to do so like, like you, meta style or no, not necessarily because like even Ryan's new videos have slowed down so much. Like I want to start out each of my videos with like a talking head for an hour now. Like even if like this was the placement, like like this. Like today, uh, we're gonna be trying to learn bl blank. Bring in a little story of why I want to learn it. Like for for everything on here, there's a reason why I want to learn it. Like learn how to play a guitar, uh, a song on the guitar. Growing up, my dad was like '70s rock and roller, do hair down to his shoulders. He played with his band and his friends all night long, and I never got to learn how to play guitar before he passed away. And I was like, I would it'd be so sick to learn how to play a song on his actual guitar. Just because, like, why not? And it, plus, it's uh, it's also relatable. Who doesn't want to do that? Learn how to build a shelter. I used to go hunting a lot as a kid and do a lot of, like, watch a lot of Bear grills and stuff like that. So I love just thinking about building a shelter. Yeah, so there's real meaning behind them. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of these have, like, meaning behind them. Like, I want to make edible water, which is funny because that's an idea that Ryan, like, learned how to make edible water. Ryan did, remember when we broke that apart? Yeah. But I'm a huge geek for science. Like, I love Oh, you've been a science boy. Bro, dude, if you, look at my, if you look at my YouTube page, it's just all, like, science channels. It's just all science channels. That's all I love to watch. Like, people that, like, but they do crazy stuff. Like, they take, like, a ceiling fan and they put katanas on it. 
Okay. And they throw Jeez. like and they and they and they put like two or three like high powered like servo motors on it, and they just spin the death out of it and just throw fruit into See, it. See, now and, like, that's a fan you could sell in England because it has a knife on it. Exactly. Yeah. Dude. Like it's just automatically gonna cut people up. But I love that's. I, I wish I had a higher intellectual like capabilities. Maybe I will over time to try to do like smaller things. But I would love to do that stuff, and I think it always does well too, just because it's like all of it's so much fun. Yeah, it is. It is good fun doing it. Obviously, it's frustrating when it doesn't it, work out. But if you're picking challenges that you like, there's a there's actually a real meaning as to why you want to do it. Then I'm sure you're actually going to enjoy doing it because then you like the goal is so much yeah. more real. Like I thought it'd be cool to learn how to find geostones in the wild, but it's the hell's a geostone. Like, it's like it literally looks like a normal rock, but when you crack it open, it has like crystallizations in it, like amethyst, uh, oh, quartz, as uh, um, crystals, bismuth. Yeah, as bismuth or whatever. But that's because I, when I grew up, I was a huge fan of. I was a huge crazy rock nerd. Like I used to have these egg cartons, literally full of like amethyst, uh, sediment, um, like um, onyx. I had um, you, had, you, had, you had a rock Dude. of sediment. That's just flipping Dude. compressed Bro. layers of trash. Yes, yeah, just compressed layers of like volcanic ash. Okay. Like I had so many. I had like cartons of like different like rocks and stuff. And okay, celebrate. Anyways, dude, what is that's crazy? But I, I found one. But that all started because I was running through like the woods as a kid one time. I found like a perfect circle rock and I was like, this is the coolest rock I've ever seen. So I took it home. My dad goes, oh, I think it's like a, like a geo type of thing. Like there's crystals inside. So I was like, what? I put that bad boy in a sock and I hit it with a hammer and I opened it up and it was like this perfect circle with just like gems all over in it. And then I was obsessed with rocks for like two or three years straight. Like I was literally siphoning like outside all the time for like fossils and like geodes and stuff and i had like this huge collection and all, every rock was in its own individual like little egg carton like slot but i think that'd be so cool so you were kind of weird you were kind of weird growing up weren't you you were you were pretty weird you're a pet <laughs> you're rock boy kids. over there <laughs> yeah so it's just a bunch of like random things and i'm sure like as time passes like It'll, I'll be able to like expand out and do other fun things. Like I was saying, if you look at that Mike Boyd guy's channel, he's done all kinds of like, he, he started out by like learning things basically, but he over time would also branch into like other endeavors too. But like, whether it be kind of like a sciencey thing or more of like a physicality challenge. Uh, Mike Boyd, 3 million. Okay. All right. Yeah, he doesn't even post like crazy anymore. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, uh, okay. Interesting. I'll have a look at stuff as well. It seems kind of interesting. But yeah, my whole goal would be to like obviously show the whole, whole journey from start to finish. Yeah, Some things you... might take a day or two. Some things might take two weeks. Um, so are you going to... Like, how is the... Are you going to... You know, be doing lots of editing, sound effects, cutting, zooming, whatnot, or is it just going to be like super raw, just a cut? I want it to tail? be like more raw, some cuts. The most I might do is like some panning and, and music. Uh, I don't want to do like a bunch of sound effects. I don't want to do a bunch of like these like crazy imaging transition something, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah. I just want it to be like raw cuts. With like with music to help with like the ambiance of the scene or the clip and some some panning. Okay, cool. All right, when are you gonna start that? I'm hoping to like probably end of this week. I'm probably gonna start with the kickflip video. I think I'm gonna start with that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go to Facebook Marketplace and try to find somebody where I can buy a skateboard from. I which I'm gonna. I was like, oh, oh, I'll just do that in the video. Like I'll do that. Like, the, join the meet a random person, and then I could ask them for some tips. <laughs> oh yeah, that's kind of a good thing. So, like this is this is the tough bit, isn't it? Because you want your video to get into it as soon as possible. Like if your video is about kick flipping, people want to see you trying to kick flip immediately. Yeah. And something I just realized, like literally yesterday, was I. You probably can't. Can you see any of the words up here? Yeah, crisis. Um... Can you see no, banana? Uh, the like, you see the 
the titles? Yeah. Okay. So up here, this one, you have the setup want. And then you move up to the point of no return, which is like... So this whole section here, these three... Yeah. Are like the... How you build into the video, right? And I've always thought you have this setup one, which is the thing that instigates the whole video, the reason for the whole video. And then you get into the point of no return, which is, in my opinion, where you actually start like kick flipping, for example. Mm -hmm. And then you go from there. But I came to this idea that if you talk through the reason for the video before you actually get going, you have a good chance of people leaving thinking, oh, it's going to take bloody ages for him to get into it. So when I'm thinking about the kickflip video, I wonder, this is just me thinking now and you probably have this figured out, but I wonder if like you start showing that you're kickflipping, like you have the first go or two, and then you start going into the story of how you actually picked up the board and you tell it as if like an after the fact thing. And then you go into the story of, because that way you can show the person show the viewer that you got the board from someone on Facebook and you ask them what kind of tricks you could do while also yeah. making the viewer realize that you've like, you're, you've already started this challenge. You're already going. So you have to complete it now. Yeah, no, I think that's very true. Like, but that's, <laughs> that's the same thing we've talked about, like pretty much immediately verifying the thumbnail. Yeah. So like letting people know at the beginning that you're doing what's supposed to happen at the end, I guess. Yeah, no, I agree. And then, like, you and I have always been on this idea of explaining the reason why you're doing it like, as early as possible to give the person a reason to stay when actually, in my head, I came up with the idea that the main reason that someone stays is that they feel like they're getting whatever the hook or the thumbnail was. And then you suck them yeah. into the story. So it would be, like, starting out with me doing, like, a couple of kickflips are trying to do a couple of kickflips yeah like th you're actually announcing that you're starting it like this is my first try in 20 years of doing a kickflip you know you try a couple yeah. of times and then go into the story of how why you wanted to do it how you got the board and then you want to try yeah, what I, could, I could even do that and be like this is my first uh this is like day one hour zero of me trying to do a kickflip for the first time in like 10 years or whatever uh, and then just be like, as I go to start doing the kickflip, I could like pause it and just be like, but before we do that, before we get into that, here's why like we're doing this or something like that. Yeah, I, I personally, I don't like that because it feels like I, I, I then think as I go through the video, they're going to tell me they're going to do something, but they're going to go on to something else first. I personally hate yeah, that. So that weird. doesn't mean it's wrong. Because watching Ryan, like, he has such a story at the beginning of every video. I know. But I also would say that someone like Ryan, come on, dude. When you get to his level, people watch his video for him. Like, they they know what to expect from Ryan. They're going to watch it no matter what. Like, that's why his thumbnails always hit. It's not necessarily that of every thumbnail is incredible. It's that the everyone yeah. converts because they see his face yeah i don't know i'm i'm just trying out this idea i only had it yesterday because i've been doing you know the same way for almost a year now i, I yeah. just thought i'd no, share that um because that's that's where i find the massive fall off is is when you start to initiate yeah, the story that you're not yeah because i, I well i want to start doing more like talking in the video too, like talking heads and voicing over like what's happening, what's going on too, just so I can start to like insert my presence more into the video and be more like authentic. Yeah. Whether it be like through like a single take or whatever, like the Jay Alto that you sent me the other day. Um, so it's like, I guess, I guess like the way Eric puts it is like, if you plan out the first 30 to 45 seconds of your video, then after that you can take it from where you want. Because if the person's hooked from there, or you give them a proper reason, or show them a proper reason, they're going to stay. So I think I'm going to go watch more of, like, a couple more of Mike Shake and Mike Boyd's videos to kind of see how they go through it. I like Mike Shake's videos a lot, but his are very, like, meta. So it, it kind of, like, yeah, I yeah. can't watch too many of them, because they feel so, like, hyper-speeded. But if you watch Mike Boyd, his are, like, his are slow. Like, he'll be sitting there on the couch, like, talking to you this is what we're going to do today this is why i want to do this 
um, like, let's get into it and start out with it. Like, I watched a video of him break, trying to break a glass with his voice last night. And the whole last two minutes of his video was him just, like, going to random places and breaking a glass with his voice just to, like, show it off and just goof around. That's kind of cool, though. Bro, you're going to love this video. This dude. Okay, okay, okay. I, I found this yesterday. This you, random YouTube channel. Um, never uploaded before this search salt fork uh, 6 million views 5 months salt fork it's a guy named Ben Walker that yeah. video is incredible everybody that watched his video literally said I thought you had way more videos than this are you sure you haven't been doing YouTube like your whole life like the, the direction and the way that he filmed this video incredible okay masterpiece the dude the dude ma produced it like I, I thought I was watching somebody who's been making YouTube videos for five years it was crazy <laughs> all right I'll have a watch of it I'll have a watch of it <laughs> but that's such like but that's kind of what inspired me to write down a lot of the things that I did on here because like salt fork is so stupid like it's but it's a guy thing it's yeah like you love like salt salty meat like salty steak so it's like a guy would only think what if I made a fork out of salt and it sounds so dumb, but it's so funny, and it it's so relatable. Yeah, and you just like it's so out of left field, but so basic that you you're kind of like, well, okay, what does this mean? Because I could probably actually do that myself if it's good. Exactly, like mm -hmm. it's it's insane how how he shot it and like filmed it. There's there's no crazy sounds. There's the, you know there's only cuts with panning and music, and that's it. And it was phenomenal, like okay. what he did. I'll have a watch. And it. he had a bunch of like interjections and stuff, but six million is is crazy. And he hasn't even come back to his channel. I'm like, that's wild. Yeah, that is nuts, isn't it? He's just posted one video and then that's that. That's done. You know, yeah, he grab 113k <laughs> off of that. Like, yeah, maybe it's just a dude who was oh, like, I, I kind of want to make a video on this, and then I'm I'm just not really bothered about anything else. Dude, that's crazy though. Like... <laughs> the description, it would be cool. <laughs> Yeah, like it's so simple, like it's so basic, but it's so relatable. And you can see in the video, like he's not trying hard, like he's he's just thoroughly like doing it to enjoy himself. Yeah, I think that's where. And I, see if it actually works. I see a direction for YouTube, which is so. I'd say I'd say early YouTube. Yes, it was people turning on a camera and just filming themselves, but I think there was still a lot of there was still this desire to only share the good bits about your life and like still make your life seem really oh, good. Yeah. So then it trans then it trans transcended, it moved into people making videos about the best things in their life and it was born yeah. the influencer. And now it's come to a then it then it just went like meta style. And I think now people want, you know, something much lighter and it's people really want to in, see the crap. Yeah. It's now in a place of I think actually people prefer to see the crap than they prefer to see someone like really winning. But it's yeah, like it's really hard to actually share like the failures, like making a video and then turning the camera on again the next day and being like, you know what? I probably should have actually worked harder on this yesterday. I should have finished that before I finished working or. I, oh, yeah. I'm seeing like these kind of problems in my workflow, what I do. Like it's, yeah. it's different, it's tough, but I think that's the way that people want it now. But it's mental yeah. to me that people have an hour at least in their day to watch one of these videos. Isn't it? To watch one of what videos? Like, let's just say for example, a Sam Sulek one hour video. That's a lot of time. Yeah, but I think people like it's like a background thing though. Like people will put it on while they're working out. People will put it on while they're on break. People will put it on while they're driving. It's almost like a podcast. So people, you're thinking people watch it in snippets. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like, cause that's what Hannah used to do with like when she would watch like hour or two long like videos. It'd just be snippets throughout the day. Interesting. Okay. Oh. Just keep coming back to it, or just leave it on like consecutively, like in the background. Interesting. Okay. All right, that's good to know. Yeah, because I've always. But that's why I think it's gonna be. 
like really in like these types of challenges too because obviously I'm gonna get mad frustrated I'm gonna get so angry I can think of the last time I was trying to learn a kickflip right now and how mad it made me why in if you're doing these challenges if if you're thinking you go for you know, maybe six or eight minutes why not go all out and just be like record everything for that day and just post all of that in one day and be like all right well tomorrow i guess i'm trying again that would be another way to do it too is like just do like a daily upload for and each each like upload be a series like if it takes me six days to learn a kickflip and i do like two three hours a day it could literally be six videos that are like two three hours a day and then the ending video could be like i finally learned to kickflip or something like that yeah i i think and, and then i just go on to the next challenge yeah i i like i'm I have a couple of things that I'll be doing that will take time. It's just like a once a day thing. And I guess my vision of that is that people will start to get uh, invested in whatever it is. Even if it's just like I'm taking some kind of like new magnesium pill to see how like what it does to me every 30 days. Mm-hmm. Or Is that what you're doing? Is that why you brought it up? Uh, yeah. Um, and Are you then, doing that for like a short or a long form video? It will be for a short, but narrating all of that in a long form, I think more things like that give pers- give someone, make someone feel more invested. Like I'm seeing yeah, how they progress I, on a daily basis. Well, I'm, I'm taking magnesium glycinate right now. Oh, you got the wrong probably, one. Oh, I'm just what do you I, mean that's the wrong one? I, I like, I'm that's not, the one that you're supposed to take for sleep. I didn't. Oh, I didn't actually mean like you're taking the wrong one. I don't really know much about it, but I did read oh, okay, go. that sucrosomial magnesium is the better of all magnesiums to take because of the way the body absorbs it. I need to do more yeah. research on it, but because uh, it's suco, that makes sense. But um, it's a type of fat absorption. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, you already know more than me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I I think that that way. You're not doing all the editing. You're able to post more content. It's more you. You don't have to be someone. You can just, you know, speak what's on your mind as you're doing it. Yeah, no, I actually think that'd be really cool. It's kind of like a nervous thing to do, though, because that's like a really different, like, left field type of thing. It is. It's tough. But, But you don't have to post it, do you? I mean, let's say, worst case scenario, you film all this stuff and then you have to go through it to make a six or eight minute edit. Like That's a lot of footage though. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, when I edit my videos, that let's, let's say my videos are somewhere between an hour and two and a half, three hours, it only takes me about an hour to skim through the whole video, make sure I don't say anything too stupid, and to cut out and export clips for the yeah. video. So, like if you watch it on double speed, an hour and a half video is going to take you 45 minutes to get through, you know, plus other bits and you're looking at an hour. And you can skip tons of bits that you remember. Yeah, that's very true too. I really like I'm I don't I I'll, t- I'll tell you this, I am so happy that I'm not having to edit long form videos meta style anymore. I love oh, the TikToks. Yeah, I love TikToks. That's why I was saying regardless, like, I'm not editing it, like, meta style. I cannot do it. It's, right. Yeah, it's too much. It's And if you it's, don't get it right, all that time is wasted. Yeah, all that time is literally wasted. Like, if if I can edit one of these vi- types of videos, like, if I were to quote-unquote edit it down, and I could do that in, like, two or three hours, in comparison to putting 12 hours into a meta style for no reason and get the same results, like, there's no point. And I, like, you hear that people doing meta style videos, excuse me, will spend like 40 plus hours just on editing alone. Yeah, I mean the longest I've spent on editing a video is like 16 hours. I know, that's that's so much time, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like, it's almost like you should just start out with the basic. Yeah. Just start out with the basic, and once you start getting your foot in the door, you can start adding a little bit more. But rather than like editing like you're on the cast of The Last of Us, you should just edit like you're a normal like person sitting in your in your in your basement. And then once you start getting some like some traction, then start to put a little bit more into it. Yeah, but, if you, yeah, if you want to go that direction, yeah. 
even like Ryan's like beginning videos are so basic. I mean, everybody's videos are basic. I like think, at the beginning. I think, from my opinion, someone like Ryan's videos, they're meant to look very basic, but I don't think they are very basic. Oh, he has a lot of thought behind his too, yeah, think, because yeah. of all this Casey Neistat like watching. I think, yeah, I think he has a ton that goes into every single part, which is, is draining. I mean, he loves it, his team love it, fantastic, people love it. But that's, yeah. until, like, you imagine you probably have to go for, unless you pop off, you're probably going to have to go for six months or so at least of making that content in the same style again and again before you'll see any movement. Yeah. No, exactly. So, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the horribly draining bit. And that's another caveat about this, these style of videos that I was talking about because these are almost like how-tos also. Yeah. It's almost like a learning tutorial thing. So it plays into like an SEO part, which obviously isn't like insanely big, but it will play into that because I can only imagine how many people have searched how to, how to do a kickflip, how to ride a unicycle, how to do a front flip, how to throw knives. Like, I will. I, I hate that it seems like I'm dogging on it. If you make it, if you try, I know your goal isn't to target SEO because you, I, yeah. mean, I think we've had this conversation before that when you make tutorials, as, as soon as someone gets what they want from the tutorial, they're gone, yeah. Yeah, and if the tutorial isn't concise and this is what you do and then this and then this, they're going to be gone because they're there for one yeah. reason. Um, and so if you, I guess my advice would be, my suggestion, <laughs> unsolicited advice would be don't go for SEO stuff. Don't don't go oh, for nah. a tutorial base, which I don't think you are. No, I'm not at all. Yeah, but I think you could like, hit that the, market. Yeah, my whole goal is like the first day out of like trying to do something, I want to do it with no experience. I don't want to look up any tutorials. I don't want to look up any help. So like day one is going to be like from the ground. Like I want to put in like, I want to use my own brain, my own critical thinking, my own like solving and solution to try to figure out if I can even lead myself in the proper direction before hopping into watching a YouTube tutorial on how to do it or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's so, a really good way to do it. Then it also, yeah, it's like, I think that's more relatable anyways, because like if you're, a lot of times if you start doing something, it's usually on the spot. And who reads instructions anyway? Yeah, and tutorials are so long and like daunting. Like, and you give people the chance to give their suggestions. Yeah. Which people love doing. <laughs> I get just like yeah, me in like, this conversation. Eh, it, it's, yeah, I think it has a lot of potential, especially because it's just more of like a, a journey type of thing. I think it's like, uh, it's just like something that, you know, a little piece of something that sits in everybody. Yeah, I know. I, I, I think those are, are you, so you're wanting to stay in a niche of just learning things that you wish not necessarily you just have. learning but just challenging myself into like other perspectives versus being like i'm staying on a, in an island for 24 hours like something that like 99 percent of people are never gonna do right. actually probably 99.9 percent .9 of people are never gonna do and that's the kind of thing where you're either there for the person or the video is just pure entertainment exactly 100 percent. no one gets anything from the idea no, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not, it's, it's immediately out the gate. Like your, your idea has to be relatable or it has to be wow. Yeah. And if, if, if you think this is a wow factor and it's not a wow factor, then it's, it's a waste. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's why like certain videos I've done, like training, like Cristiano Ronaldo, that's, that's a relatable thing. A lot of people know him. A lot of people have seen him. And a lot of people wonder what his diet is, what his day-to-day -day life is. So it's like it becomes a relatable thing because everybody knows who he is and they're curious. Yeah. So that video did really well. Bucky's, for us, I think did pretty decent. Um, especially because, like, well, it did better than everything else overall. But that's just because I think Bucky's is a relatable thing to the South that a lot of people love. Yeah. And a lot of people go in and, like, even children or adults are like, oh, this is so cool. Like, wow. Like we didn't do anything like honestly like astronomical or crazy. We just we just have fun with it. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would do that again in more of like a conversational. Well, would I? I don't know. It was it was cool to try. 
but I don't know. Like yeah. I might, you know, a video of just visiting it maybe, but doing challenges like now, the idea of going to Bucky's and doing challenges just seems like, why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> well, a lot of people are getting like really screwed over right now for just being like, like I think a lot of those meta people are getting screwed over. So you know Phidias? Yeah. He just recently did a video of him and a couple of friends trying to cross Japan uh, with no fare, paying no money for anything, no food, no no travel, no transport. Like he's done in other countries, like sneaking onto buses and, and trains and stuff. <clears throat> and he got put in jail like twice there. And he's being blasted by like other like YouTubers that have either been to Japan, live in Japan currently, or just people in general that are saying like this whole like disrespecting other cultures and going like, this extra above and beyond mile for for a click on your video needs to stop because you're actually going to these people's like countries and you're completely disobeying like their laws and their like desires for their like societal norms and it's not okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't see how you couldn't see that coming after the, the Logan Paul situation. Like, why would you do something yeah. like this? Like, people in, I would say, in Asian countries, particularly China and Japan, want to avoid conflict. And yeah. Indians too. So doing that kind of thing in a country where people want to avoid conflict naturally, yeah, it just seems like a a pretty disrespectful thing to do in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, so I think a lot of this day and age of doing like this just stupid like yeah. putting yourself out there stuff is going to start to like slowly just like be stripped away because people are starting to become more like culturally appropriated and understanding of other people's cultures and how they run and th and understanding like that stuff's not okay yeah i think turning it from if the if the reason for the idea is just because you think the idea is crazy enough to get clicks then i think it's stupid then i think it won't do well but if the idea is because you're genuinely interested in it like i'll give you a stupid example this morning I had one which is park multiple cars in a city and see which one gets a ticket first. Like, stupid idea doesn't help or change anyone, but I'm like, I'm curious. Like, are, are there certain you know what you areas? Could do? do parking meters actually work? Go to parking meters, park multiple cars at different parking meters, and do like a statistical analysis on how often they, um. like, you actually get ticketed. And then you could be, by the end of your video, you could be like, um oh it's only 10 percent. like one in 10 cars that we parked in these spots they just be like so at the end of the day if you want to park your car in a like uh like a certain area or whatever you theoretically only you have a 90 percent chance of not being caught so yeah that, it sounds like that, a mark that, robo video that's exactly what i was going to say it's like when he dropped the waltz across like uh the city and yeah did that um yeah and like that's that to me like i think that's so cool like that's fun i would watch that but that's because i love watching those like experimental like right where it's more of an like, experiment just goofy things like yeah yeah where it's definitely it's less about getting crazy clicks and it's more about kind of the experiment and then finding a way to turn that into a video that people might enjoy i don't know i'm i guess i'm finding it hard to describe the difference between that and like that phidias video because maybe he really wanted to try that. But, hmm, yeah, I don't know how to articulate, how to share what I think the difference is. Articulate what? The, what, like, what is the real difference between, I guess, I'm thinking, what's the real difference between parking cars in Seattle and seeing where it gets broken into versus trying to get across Japan? I guess the real difference is, you're not dis you're not like you you're not necessarily going against you're not harming anybody. Yeah, but you kind of it's And the the US already has this notion of no one gives a fuck. Yeah, but if you if a let's say a Japanese person, content creator, came over to the US and parked cars in multiple places in a city, people would I think people would think it's funny because US people are ignorant. People think people think like school shootings are funny in this country. Like the the US is messed up. <laughs> no, that's what yeah. I'm saying though. Like the US is the US is like literally just one big like experiment. Like this is crazy here. It, it is pretty. But like parking parking cars and like the US the expectation of the US is like people just don't care anyways. 
So parking cars, like, where you shouldn't park them, I think is, like, I don't think it's, like, it's not going to harm anybody and no one's actually going to care. It's not, like, what, what are you going to do, make somebody late for work because you took their spot or something? Like, Yeah, but you are you are playing, I know, it's you're playing on soci- on a society, right? Like, you're playing yeah. on the American society that people steal stuff all the time and you're, like, kind of baiting. Oh, you're trying to do what they break in. I thought you were saying tickets. Oh, no. No, no, no. I, sorry. Yeah, break in. No, I mean, I think I think that's funny, bro. I love watching some of the videos where people put bikes in the parks and they tie like invisible like rope onto them. I like those too. Like it's so funny. Like Mark has done certain videos like that too. Like he's done videos. He, he Mark did this one video where he like uh, was like evading like porch pirates or whatever. So he put in like these like confetti bomb explosives with music into like packages like i don't think anything's wrong with that you're just showing that like not everybody's good yeah it's just funny yeah i mean those those videos went crazy viral didn't they but yeah i mean yeah (laughs) oh yeah they went insane viral i think if you start to involve randomers have you did you see anything about this um this target guy dude who did the target run and like he films himself at the checkout Grabbing his groceries. No, what was that? Oh, dude. I... It's so weird. It's like... You know, let's say Casey Neistat vlogging was like he'd set up the camera as if the camera was just there and captured him doing something. Like walking along the street or something. Um, Yeah. This dude filmed himself doing a target run. So he's in his house getting ready. And then he leaves the house. And the next thing you see is... The camera on a tripod, like, five or six spots down the car park, and he's reversing into his parking spot, right? And then the next shot is him, like, walking into Target, and then he's filming himself picking out groceries and whatnot. All of that seems fine, because no one else is in the shot, but then he sets up the tripod as he's ch- checking out, and, like, you have the, the person who's checking him out, you have other customers, and they're all on camera, like their faces, reactions, <laughs> everything. And you see him then walk off with his shopping cart. And obviously he has to then come back and get his camera. But can you... I can't imagine the embarrassment of being like, oh, don't mind the camera that's right there filming you. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just, like, it's going to be my TikTok. But that's exactly, that's why I want to start doing things on more of like an interpersonal level. Like old school YouTube was people would just sit in the room like you are right now and they would never leave the room and make YouTube videos. Like, yeah. Yeah. And they would just like watch stuff and just the, comment on it. Like keep the spaces in. Cause I think, yeah, people are getting so tired of people like inserting themselves like out into like the public. Yeah. Like it's, it's becoming overbearing. Yeah. It's too much. And people, yeah, people, like, whereas people used to Karen, what, Whereas people used to look at you like, oh, that guy's recording something or that person's recording something or doing something. Now people look at you with like disgust. They're like, are you, are you, are you serious right now? Like, yeah, like, come on, dude. Yeah. uh, You, people definitely look down on content creators, which I feel like. Well, I think it's because people have become so more, so much more like ignorant with time because people are, people have gotten complacent with like the doing like more basic things. So they keep ramping it up, you know, it's just like a, it's, it's like, oh, if I make more money, I'm not going to spend more money. But then you start spending more money because you're making more money and it becomes just like this snowball. Like, oh, it has to be bigger and better, bigger and better, roll and roll and roll and keep doing And I think TikTok and short form content has just absolutely ruined the expectation of people with like social media now. Yeah. So people are looking to, for somebody more basic, more simple, more relatable, more, like, not out in public, just, like, being ignorant or stupid. Yeah, let's see someone doing normal stuff. Well, you know, yeah. I guess, like, let's, we'll, I guess we'll use Sam again. Yeah, he's doing normal <laughs> stuff, but the normal stuff also has this outrageous tint to it. Like, counting all his macros and shit. When he goes to the gym, he's not just going to the gym, he's, he's lifting more than my flipping house weighs. It's, it's 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 normal with a caveat. Like no one wants to see you vacuum your house. But if you said, "I vacuum my house upside down," okay, yeah, I'll probably get watched that. I'm gonna see how you did that because I'm now now I'm curious. Right, but I would say that if Sam was gonna go and vacuum his house while also doing talking bits, 
people would watch because they're invested in him and whatever comes out of well, him. Well, they're next. invested in him now. Yeah, he's yeah. a Ryan. He's a Ryan Trahan now. It doesn't yeah. matter. And so what he does now doesn't matter. He could now start pumping out three videos a day. Like one video is him getting to the gym and doing his food. The next one is going through homework or whatever or going to and from class. Yeah. Right? Like, and another reason why he started exploding in the past week is Chris Bumstead is coming up on his final prep week for his Mr. Olympian like fifth, fifth medal for world comp. And there's a clip of Seabum saying... Have you seen that? Have you seen Sam Solik? That kid is wild. That dude is absolutely insane. He, and then Seabum goes, "Bro, when I step down, Sam can step up and take over. He can take my position." And that clip is like all over the internet, everywhere, like right. mega viral. I mean, you're talking about literally the Jesus Christ of of weightlifting and bodybuilding, saying and talking about Sam Solik, and then saying he can take over for me. This dude is a beast. He's gonna he's gonna eat everything. Like yeah. he's gonna destroy everybody. I mean, I hope so I'm wrong. Like, he's not dead by that time. Yeah, like Seabom is is the president of literal weight, like bodybuilding, bodybuilding and weightlifting around the entire planet, of eight billion people. Like it's insane, and the, so I'm I'm sure that played a huge role in like his his thought, bump too. I thought we only had week. like six point three billion as of a year or two ago. Where have, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm I don't just know, saying maybe maybe COVID maybe COVID killed a lot. Of people. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> let me check. Let me check. clean out the wikis. I'm just kidding. All right, I'm just kidding on that. So, <laughs> someone's gonna be like, "My grandma no, died not. during COVID." So, 2021 estimated at 7.9 billion people. Jesus, bro. What? What? India That's has a like lot. a third of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. India literally has a third of that. But yeah, I've just been like, dude, if you look at my YouTube feed, because I was like, what do I like to watch, too? Like, dude, they're all science people. Oh. Like, they're all people that do, like, science videos and make, like, stupid things. So fun, just fun stuff to do. Yeah, I think that's it, isn't it? Just fun stuff to like do. Like, making food that, yeah, like, I watched this dude named Nile Blue, making food that lasts forever, making the world's most pure cookie. I made chocolate, but from scratch. Like, that's so relatable because you eat chocolate. People eat chocolate all the time. And if you've seen, like, what a cacao bean looks like, it literally it looks like an alien organism. Yeah. Like, it does not look native to this planet. Yeah, no, it doesn't. You're right. So I'm you can do it. Yeah, I could do a video like, I learned how to make chocolate from scratch. Like, Yeah, and it just ends up tasting like absolute ass, but you still made actual chocolate. <laughs> Yeah, like it doesn't even matter. This person took a glove and turned it in hot sauce through like chemistry. Dude, you. I'm watching that. Like, I. So here's here's something that I plan on doing, and with your content, this will be so easy to do. So I'm gonna share it from my perspective and and how it's gonna fit into yours. So like, if you have multiple things running, let's say you try and do a kickflip. Like, let's say that's gonna take you three days to do, but. Learning how to make chocolate is going to take you six weeks, let's just say. Like, there's a fermentation process that takes three weeks, let's say. Yeah. If you have, imagine, imagine you start the chocolate making video today and you don't get done until February. But, like, so then in between there, you're going to make how to kickflip, how to throw darts. But inside of all of those yeah. videos, you can refer back to the chocolate making. Oh, the chocolate scene, yeah, yeah. So now you have this one open loop, right? The chocolate making. Like a wormhole. Yeah, and so you can feed back into this loop. And so while someone may find you for the chocolate video, they're now invested in the kickflip and whatnot because they're getting updates about the chocolate. Yeah, no, exactly. I agree, because there's... Oh, what, was, what video that? Well, like, playing the guitar song. I think that's going to take forever, bro. That's going to take, like, probably a couple months to learn how to do that. Yeah, I bet it will. And that's that's a slow burn, but I think that's that's pretty real. No one learns. Like, you think of a YouTube video. No one learns how to play a guitar in ten minutes of that YouTube video. So show the whole process, the ups and downs. There'll be times when you're like, you know, I, I don't know if I can be asked to do this anymore. But then three days later, you'll pick it back up and be like, you know what? I actually really do want to finish this. It's hard work. I'm yeah. not enjoying it right now. But the idea of completing completing it is what's driving yeah. me. 
Can't do that. Speaking of slow burn, I wanted to do a video. Like you brought up the spice tolerance thing, I wanted to do like a month long like project video of trying to see if it's actually possible to build your spice tolerance or not. And I thought it'd be cool if I started out with like certain objects and I rated them on like a scale of like like not hot to hot, like one to five, one to 10 or whatever. And then like at the end of the 30 day journey of just blasting my asshole out for like 30 days straight, almost not 30 days straight, but progressively over time, like then seeing if those objects that were, you know, hot to me before are still the same amount of hotness. <laughs> you imagine if like, like, I think it would work that way, but can you imagine if actually it's like a, a generational thing that over time like the indian and like asian down, like, bro it's got to it's got to it's got to 100%. like back in the 1600s Asians... they were terrible with spice and it's taken them to yeah. now to get like good with spice <laughs> and you're trying to do yeah. it in like a couple of months or a year <laughs> and you just get <laughs> like, nowhere <laughs> yeah dude like uh what that would be that like, would be seriously interesting though because you're not just seeing if you can deal with it you're trying to train your body to react a certain way to it. Yeah, exactly. And then I could do like a little bit more research on it too, saying that, you know, like it's scientifically backed that like it's more through like pain tolerance or like receptors and you know, there, there's a lot more that goes into it than just like eating, um, like just eating the food. Like I could do a title, like what if you could build your spice tolerance? Yeah. And then just go through like a 30 day like thing. I was just trying to do it. I'll tell you, like I'm, I'm currently in this place where each of my like YouTube vlogs are about uh, making TikToks, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I would be really cool if I can get to a place. <laughs> Ouch, bro, I crack my knees. <laughs> These things are done for. It'd be really cool if I could get to a place where the like this kind of vlog thing is like doing that kind of thing, like learning how to do that or just like going off and doing the experiment and it's not just about making a TikTok, not doing something just to make a TikTok, you know, but yeah, like right now, it's about making enough money to make ends meet for the month. No, and, and nice I agree. When that wasn't the case. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and that's the hard balance of it too because like I'm talking to this girl, her name's Jillian and I was telling her about it and she was like, yeah, it's obviously different for like you as opposed to him. Like you have a family yeah. to take care of. I just have myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like, it's... I can make, like, two grand a month and be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Which is, yeah, you could a couple of, couple of videos a month or one brand deal and you're good. Yeah. Exactly. So. Which, I'll probably hide this bit, actually, just because I think it's kind of personal. But my manager has been mm -hmm. going in at deals at, like, 3K. When my average views are like a million, he's been going in at three yeah. k, which I just yeah, that's way too low. And like we just did, this is shitty, but I've just done four videos with Anchor for six k, so one point five per video. Jesus. Which and I'm doing that just because I need you know that money you know would be needed. I did six videos with Qualcomm for thirty four k. I know. And I didn't even have to post them on my social media. And the, I, I know, like, exactly, and I'm, and my manager is pitching me to these brands at 3 or 4K. Yeah, I'm actually, too low. I'm going to stop recording right now. It should be. All right, sorry, I kind of ended it abruptly. Just wanted to ask him something that I didn't think would be right to share. Um, but then we kind of got talking about how, how do these, Big names on like we were talking about Jinxy, the streamer. You know, like how does he pull millions every single video? And it's because he's built his fan base on like in his case, Twitch. Which is like a like on Twitch you're live streaming, so you get to understand who the person is, you learn about them. Very much similar to YouTube. And then he, he said something crazy. It was he being Kenny. The people who have made it on YouTube or Twitch easily make it on TikTok 
and other short form platforms. It's because people then recognize the face and they know them from YouTube, they, they like them, they're a fan of them because they've seen more of them on YouTube. And what Kenny and I have been trying to do is reverse engineer, not reverse engineer it, we're trying to do that the other way, which is trying to grow this, like we'll call it fan base on TikTok and then bring it over to YouTube, which is just not working. He, he used this amazing analogy. This is probably the best thing that's come out of Kenny and I mean that as like a really good thing. He's saying, him and I starting on short form content is like buying the six week course on how to be a millionaire and then just failing and then buying another course and then failing again and then buying another and failing again. Whereas YouTube is like the, the four year college degree that takes a long time, but you know it's gonna get you a job and half decent money to start with. Which kind of sucks because you spend like him and both, both him and I have spent the last like two, three years on TikTok making videos time and again. And it's not really building anything. Like on TikTok, because people don't really care about who you are, excuse me, because people don't really care about who you are and they don't remember the name, there's nothing that carries on from video to video. So even if someone sees your face, they might just scroll because they don't really recognize it, right? And they don't care for that face. Um, yeah, so it seems like we just keep pressing on on here, keep making the videos I enjoy on TikTok and stop thinking about money and metrics. Which, I, the only reason that I'm down slightly is because you look at all of the work that's been put in on TikTok and it still feels, it doesn't feel like you've grown anything. It feels like you've, like it's all empty. That even if I make a new video tomorrow, it doesn't matter about all the three years of work aside from learning how to make a video. The, like, the, the, the followers you've built, the trust you've built, none of that really seems to matter on TikTok. But if you can do all of that on YouTube, then TikTok should be fine. Like this is the mental thing I was saying to Kenny too after this conversation. It was, so are you saying that if we can hit millions of views a video without anyone knowing or caring about who we are right now, does that mean if people know who we are from Twitch or YouTube and then see a video on TikTok that we should like blow the hell up? That seems to make sense, doesn't it? Like if you can do it the hard way, then it should go just nuts when you do it the easy way. I don't mean easy, but like through TikTok, through YouTube or Twitch. I don't know. I'm... <laughs> I think right now, all right, quick shift. I'm gonna try and let's just edit three clips, put them in the Google Drive folder and see if the automation works when it should. Oliver, that's a cracking idea. Okay, we're gonna go to, I'm gonna open up CapCut. And I deleted all the gameplay, didn't I? Oliver, you're a bit of a reject for doing that. But that's okay. All right, new project. Jeez, that was loud. Uh, let me screen record for, for thy. Let's see this video, clips. Oh, I'm gonna get a video with more than 10 clips in it, gosh. Here we go. One, two, three. Let's just take the top three. I need to go and get some gameplay. YouTube, what should we do? Let's do Spider-Man gameplay. I just want a dude that's like swinging. Sp 
Spider-Man swinging, PS5. Web swinging gameplay. This looks so flipping good, doesn't it? All right, let's do this. PI. Um, how do I change this to be vertical format? Ratio. 16 by 9, 9 by 16, there we go. Convert. That's not what we wanted. Do a diff video. So the video that goes up today. No, that, that will go live today today, but for you it would have been two, three days ago, which we're going to catch up this weekend so that we can get to a point where the work you're watching me do was done the day before you're watching it. There, that's what I'm meaning. Here we go, get some Spider-Man gameplay in there. I always have bacon sandwiches. <laughs> Just something my mum's done for me and then I've Let's get you underneath. Oh gosh, I guess this is fine. Dude, are you gonna move down? What is going on, mate? Position. I don't, un there we go. Scale. And then this should go up and scale to up a bit. If you'd like to move, you can. Okay. Spider-Man, you can go a bit bigger, bud. Spider-Man takes up more of the screen than anything else. <laughs> All right, then let's do captions. Uh, B. Text, auto captions, create. So we're just doing these three videos and see how they work. All right, now I edit them all. Templates, and let's just use that one for sure, dude. Templates, let's change the font. That one, let's try that one. And then color. See how that looks. Move those up to the middle. Actually, I kind of want to move that down. need that. So the way I've set this up is however I name the video file that then gets sent to the video editor is going to be the caption that gets put across the top of the video. So like in this case, like that goes there and I'll just bring that all the way across, cut it in. That ain't right, is it? Cut that there, and then again here, I think. So this text, and we'll stick that, oh, for goodness sake. I swear CapCut runs harder than my actual own machine. 
the, sorry, than Final Cut Pro. I think I, I should readjust the video here, so this shouldn't be as big. And it should be more about me, shouldn't it, than the gameplay. up. Come on. There. Okay. Okay, then the next video, that's my excuse. Final one. That's not right. What is going on? I don't know if that worked. I was pressing copy and copy and it just kept like going off of it. I'm gonna make that a bit smaller. Okay, I'm also, I think, because this is going to three different profiles, I'll change what the text, no I won't, let's just, let's just do it like this. So if I remember correctly, you've set your in point, your out point, export, one, where's that going to go to? For right now, that's just going to movies folder. Shouldn't do. That's terrible. Jesus is slow. Oh. Why did I pick one that was a minute eight seconds? Oh well. Well, this is awkward, isn't it? All right, the next two are much shorter, so. They're not much shorter, that one was 44 seconds. Like a while ago. Oh, jinkies. This. I've got it to the perfect length, but my goal is to actually learn how to do it properly because at the moment. I've tried this once before and it was awful. Ready? We're not off to a brilliant start. I'm just going harder and harder until eventually I don't know where I'm looking. Bro. That was, I'm quite impressed with that. Almost done here. And last one. God, this looks Kind of long as well. 47 seconds. Why did I choose three that were bloody long? I should do, try and get to 100 in a row. I reckon, like I, I think I could get to 10 this year. Oh no, there are only two months left. I don't think I could do that. And what, I've watched a guy who was just like, it's here and he's just like going at it as if he's some like professional. When all mine is, is just slipping, tied up in circles. Like my fist is not flat. Like 
my thumbs keep getting caught, but I know because of my, because I'm a street fighter, I know that if I tuck my thumb in there, that's no good, is it? Because you'll break your thumb. Okay. <laughs> Let's upload these. That's not right. Clips. Okay. Let's get them from movies. Okay, we'll call this one Clips. We'll call the next one Daily. Nice. The next one is going to be Shorts. So we're going to go Shorts into Shorts, Daily into Daily, Clips into Clips. Okay, and it's now, like let's say they get uploaded. It's going to check every hour, so I wonder if it might check in the next four minutes for this video. And if it's there, it should pump it out to that platform. So there, that's three clips, which makes up nine pieces of content that will go out across three platforms. Okay. Let's see if in three minutes it runs. Uh, yeah. Oh dear. I should also start uploading today's videos because it's like two and a half hours long. Create, upload videos. What did I edit today? Goodness sake. Where did I export it to? Because I'm pretty certain I exported it. I guess I didn't. All right, well, that's going to take a couple of years. All right, come on, automations, do your thing. I'm looking forward to this. Um, I, I, honestly, at this point, I have no idea if it's going to run in the next two minutes or when uh, exactly what time it's going to run, but I would imagine it will run in two minutes. What are those that tool people play with? It's like, it has a handle to it, and then a, a piece of, like, a spike on top, and a ball is on a string, and then you can kind of, like, loop it up and set it on the spike, and you see people, like, swing it and then trying to catch it on there. What's the, the only thing, I can, nearest thing I can think of is katana, but that's a sword, isn't it? So, no, it's not that. This thing sucks. I suck. I still, I still think this is absolutely nuts that I could take something like this, turn it into, I could make a story out of it for TikTok and get paid for that. I could get paid to be a flipping moron and punch this around at 10.59 on Wednesday, the 1st of November. Normally, at this time, I'd probably be stuck in some meeting I didn't care about, doing something I didn't care. I wouldn't say with people I didn't care about, because, you know, the people were nice. But it was the work. I remember on this last project I was working on for my main job, I remember 
it kicked off and people were saying, like, yeah, it's, we're all looking forward to this project. It's going to be really good, really great. Um, it's going to be a lot of work. There are going to be some long nights, but we're all excited. And I'm like, what the hell are you excited about? I don't need the screen recording. <laughs> it's like, what the hell are you excited about? Nothing. Like, you're excited about doing a, f in this case, it was, I probably shouldn't say exactly what it was, but redoing something that is boring as hell, which is just a functional piece for the company, it doesn't provide any like new creativity. Are you excited about that? And then on top of that, you're excited about the fact that you're probably going to be stressed and working silly hours. That doesn't seem, that doesn't seem great. Okay, I'm checking now if this got posted. Okay, so not on TikTok yet. You know, I'm pretty impatient, so I'm I'm ready to just run this automation myself. But I should wait, shouldn't I? I'm going into the zap now and seeing when it triggers. Trigger every hour, yes. So it should go. And I don't see an option to trigger manually. Which I should do. I guess the other way I could see it, because I asked the guy who made this automation, I would like the file to be deleted from a specific folder so it's not getting uploaded multiple times. But it seemed like, or at least he told me that Zapier, Zapier doesn't have that ability. Like the API doesn't have that ability. So he moves the file from the folder where it should be taken from and then uploaded to TikTok and whatnot. You move it to a like a temporary trash type of folder, so it requires a manual deletion. Zap, how do you trigger it to go? Um, So it said nothing could be found at 11.37, which was the video was uploaded. All right, I'm going to change the trigger so that instead of going every hour, it's going to go, oh, test. That's right, because the file is not the right file type, so I need to convert it. Dot mov to mp4. That was annoying. I should have known that one. So we're going to try it again. Upload video. Let's give these a go. We'll check back in on that an hour from now. Oh, I could just trigger it to run, couldn't I? All right, let's just try with one of these for now. It's currently uploading. 
Do you want to... Let's look at the stats, by the way, for this video I posted yesterday. I'm on a journey to surprise my wife with a new laundry room. I started with... Okay. Let me stop and start again. Okay. So, this is the makeover video that I posted for the commission-based thing. And so, it's been up... It was up at 3 o'clock yesterday, so it's been up for about 21 hours. And then you see only 7,874 views, but then we look at here as to why, and you see that actually, you'd say, I would say, a good percentage to be at at the 0 0.03 second mark is 70%. As you can see, we are kind of below that, unfortunately. And then you have a, pr like, it's pretty good retention for the rest of the video, but you can see that people just aren't interested in the topic. But once they are, then they seem to be watching for a long time. That's a pretty steady line from here, from like the 20 second mark. From the 20 second to minute mark, so you're doing 46 seconds here, and you only lose 13% of your viewers. That's pretty good in my opinion. But yeah, I don't think that's gonna go, like you see a slight pickup here but I think that is because one of the other, like some of the other videos are doing well at the moment. Like followers have been doing okay, but getting oh maybe it is picking up a little bit now. It's getting more comments on it that I'll reply to very shortly. Interesting. All right. All right, final video to go in here, and then we'll give it a go. So we're going to try... I'm going to trigger off the shorts. So I'll delete the one that's in there already. Add in the shorts.mp4, which is currently loading. There we go, love about quarter done. Load. All right, let's run the short automation. Back, back, shorts. Zap runs. Let's uh, get it to run. Forget how do I do it? Here we go. Let's run a test. I have no idea if that kicked it off or not. just hitting continue, like I'm just manually running through this zap, which I think is what I need to do. Continue, 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 continue. We're on the final step, continue. file was sent to Google Drive. So did that just run? No. 
shorts are still in there, maybe it's waiting to be uploaded. I don't know. I should probably just look up how to manually run a zap, shouldn't I? Retest step. Okay, what happened there? Did that go? How to manually run a zap. Manually trigger zap, there we go. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'll just I'll try the other account. This I don't I don't think I mean you can probably tell how excited I am about it. But I really want this to work. This is basically my whole marketing plan for these videos. It's just like, essentially, it's like kicking off a whole new business to me. All right, I'm not sure how to make it run. I won't need to manually run it in the future, so I'm just, let's just sit tight for a little bit um, for the next hour. I'm going to... Um, what was I going to do? I don't remember. Toilet, and then and then then we'll get back into it. I feel like I've forgotten how to just chill and enjoy myself. Today was meant to be pretty chill. We're gonna do some fun things. No, <laughs> spent pretty much the whole day working on this zap, trying to like the zap here, the automation, trying to get it sorted. Uh, it's working now, which is great. Oh, flipping sausages. I need to just like get rid of these crappy batteries, these um, scabby batteries and just get the real ones because it keeps bringing up a notification. And to get rid of the notification, it stops the video. <laughs> All right, zaps are running. And at this point, it's just a case of getting the right file format, because that was what the problem was this whole time. Looking at the requirements and everything, it all seemed right. But then I put it through a, a converter online to change it into the right format that it was already in. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I sound stupid saying that, don't I? Yes, Oliver, you do. But it looks like it's Gucci. And we currently sit in a position where I sent the video editor the first 50% of the month for the editing, and I got, okay, bro, let me check, at 6.15 this morning, and it is currently 4.25. So I might be down $300, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, here's something. I was talking to someone about another person who's a huge TikToker. I mean, like, somewhere between 1 and 10 million. Been doing branded posts and not putting pay partnership or hashtag ad on it. What the hell is that? First thing is, whoever's managing her, what are you doing? Like, how are you not making sure that your client is doing that? That's, not only is it, I don't know if illegal is the right word, but that's like, it's so scammy. 
to the people watching that video. Like imagine if you're doing a review of something and you say how good this product is, it does this, it does that, and you don't realize that they've been paid to say those things. So you buy it and it's just crap. I don't know, I think that's, I think that's terrible. I think that's so bad. Like, don't get me wrong, do I want to put partnered posts up without the hashtag ad or the paid partnership? Yeah, because it will probably road, it would probably perform better, but I'm not doing that. That's disgusting behavior. Um, it is, it's pretty late, 4.30. Um, I should probably make a TikTok tomorrow because it, Thursday, posted one yesterday. Should go for at least two a week, shouldn't we? What should we do tomorrow? I wonder if we should do, do the shaving, another one to the shaving series. And then we can shift into obsidian and scalpel blades. But I feel like that stuff's gonna get banned on TikTok. Not sure. I hate these kind of days. It just feels like you didn't get anything accomplished. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to change up. I have six videos. One of six videos. <laughs> one of which just got posted, but the other five I need to change into the right format to then have this app run for the different profiles. So at least a few videos are up today. And then hopefully the editor can have a load ready for tomorrow. And that would be, that would be sweet. And then once this is running itself, I think it would be cool to do updates, wouldn't it, on here? Like maybe once a week, you see how the different accounts are growing. I think that would be really cool because really this is all just a marketing experiment for this channel, basically. Like imagine that this YouTube video is the, or YouTube channel is the product and how do I drive people to that product? For me, that's the TikTok videos. Okay. I'm going to... I'm going to change up these videos, get them added so they can run over the next few hours. All right, and then I want to try and get to 100, but I feel like this would be, this would make for a cool video on TikTok. See, here's my bloody problem. The shaving series, another video on that would do great. The no poo. It's time for another video on that. That would do great. Do I really want to do these two? No. Do I? Would this? This would kind of be fun. Imagine if I like how long it takes me to learn to do a hundred of these. A hundred punches. Dude, I'll get to a hundred punches, and McGregor's gonna be like, "Where the? F yeah, come on." That wasn't even a Irish accent, was it? No. Nope. All right. Cool. Hopefully tomorrow is a little less stressful. We'll see you tomorrow. See you. Bye.